Here we have a silicon on insulator taper structure, which converts incoming light from a wide silicon slab to a narrow silicon waveguide. The solver region has already been set up, and you will notice that the slab mode position and test points indicated by the green and blue crosses are placed outside of the solver region. It's actually fine to place these outside of the solver region as long as the cross section along Z is still correct. With the current slab mode position, which is at the location of the green cross, this will include the cross section of the structure including air, silicon, and the glass substrate. If you edit the bar FDTD solver region and use the user select option, you can verify the material refractive index profile along Z. You can also use the user select option to select higher order slab modes. However, this particular structure only supports one TE mode and one TM mode in the silicon slab. The other modes found in the mode list have strong fields outside the silicon slab in the glass substrate region. Change the polarization selection back to E mode TE. You can see from the plot below that the fields of this mode are confined in the region of the silicon slab. Click OK. In the graphical XY viewport, you can select and drag the position of the slab mode and test points. The test points are only used to report the calculated effective material properties and don't have any impact on the simulation results. But if I drag the slab mode position to a region where the silicon is not present, this will change the cross-section used for calculating the slab mode and will affect the simulation results. After moving the slab mode position, edit the solver region again, and you can see that the fundamental TE mode now has fields primarily in the glass region, since the silicon slab is no longer present in the structure cross-section, and the slab mode will not allow you to inject light into the silicon slab.